Hello everybody, my name is Paul Buitink and today I have an interview with Thomas Malinen. Thomas is CEO of GNS, a macroeconomic consultancy and he's economics professor uh, at the University of Helsinki. Thomas is a big proponent for Finland to leave the euro and we're going to discuss today how that should be done. Hi Thomas, so just to make sure you do want Finland to exit the eurozone, right? Yes. Okay, that's uh, and, 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 and uh, thanks for inviting me to talk about it. Here. Yeah, because I read your tweets uh, early June about um, how that should be done. It was fascinating to to actually read um, um, in, in in such detail how the process would would be like, and I think that was very uh, clarifying to me. Um, so I would love to go through the different steps uh, needed. Um, but first, yeah. first, do you, um, so this is called a fix it, right? Finland exit, fix it. But do you yes. want to exit the Eurozone and then stay within the European Union or, or exit both? Leaving just the, just the Euro would be op optimal for us, I think. The Commission has basically tied the fate of the EU and the Euro together, which is a big gamble. So I don't know. We'll see how, how it plays out. But I would like to see Finland exit just the Eurozone. Okay, and then of course people will say, oh, that's not possible if you leave the Eurozone, then constitutionally you have to uh, leave the EU as well. Do you agree with that statement? No, actually in the Finnish case we don't have any, any mention, in, we don't mention the Euro in our constitution. So we have no legal obligation to, you know, tie it to, the, to our uh, EU membership. And the, um, there's, <laughs> well, when we were taken into the euro we didn't have any referendums or shots we just we went there uh, with the prime minister's notice over the weekend basically we agreed on that and we can use the same way to get out legally okay and, so and, uh, and yeah we, we have a kind of a back door open for leaving and and the treaties of the european union and and do they also allow that then no, there is actually, yeah, but th there is no exit clause uh, f from from the Eurozone in the treaties. But the fact is that based on the international law, countries can always determine the currency they use. And, and as they, there is no, um, no, no clause contradicting this directly in, in the treaties, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, there is there's no problem with that. They're just, they're just saying that the you know, you, countries of the EU use the euro, but because not all the countries use it, there is no, you know, there is there is not, not such a legal uh, predicament for any country to stay in the euro in the European treaties. Uh, and, and before we go through the different steps, which I find fascinating, but what, what is for you the main reason to leave the eurozone? Well, there are two. First, uh, we have just published a, a, a update on, on a report we first published in 2012. We, we started to try to simulate the, uh, how, how the exports of Finland would have developed if we would remain in, the, in, the, in Marka. And currently, they show that our exports would be something 40 to 50 percent higher than they are now. And there are many reasons, but our economy has suffered under the euro. And the second thing is that, which basically made me a, a uh, full Euro skeptic, was the proposal uh, of the Commission on the Corona on the Corona Fund. And how I read it is that it's a direct breach of the of, of the basic uh, treaties or the treaties of the function of the European Union. And it just took us to a state which I have been. Or, or the er arrival of such a state, I have been afraid for quite some time. That to save the euro, we have to go in a state of unlawfulness in Europe again. And now we are there. And I don't think Finland should be a part of such, a, such an effort. So if we would want to save the euro uh, by making the European Union a federal union, we should go through a parliamentary steps requiring and changes requiring basically changes in the european treaties yeah, and I, none of this is proposed now and th that would be the correct way to do it yeah that's that's true and uh, like in holland in 2005 we had a uh, referendum about the um, european constitution and was voted against so uh, i guess if if the people were um, were to vote again 
for um, something like uh, making the European Union more of a, of a federation with a constitution. I, I can imagine that the vote again would be negative and probably in Finland as well. Yeah, it would fail for sure. And that's why they don't want to do it. They, they want to just sneak us into a federal union. I'd say it's disgusting, to be honest. And, and, but, but that's how it is. It's, we know from history that monetary unions do not survive without federal unions, transfer unions. That, that's, that's, that, that much we know. And it's, it has been, a, I don't know, it's really sad that it, it has took us so long to kind of admit to that. But if you would leave the Eurozone and you would stay within the European Union, you still would have to deal with that uh, rescue plan, the Corona Fund, the 750 billion plan. So you would still um, have to uh, suck it up that there's uh, that Germany and friends decide what's going on and that a lot of money has to flow from the north to the south. And you wouldn't be resolved from that one. So, no, that's probably that, that's the thing. That's the gamble that the Commission did. Uh, it's a, it's a very high stake gamble. So that would probably require uh, us leaving the European Union too, if if the core, if the fund really goes through, which yeah. of course. The thing is that it needs, uh, all countries need to apply to that. I'm really skeptical that all the 27 member states, all the parliaments will allow to that. And yeah. if they don't, and it, 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 even, in, even if they could, it would take quite some time before the fund would be functional. And I don't think Eurozone or the southern members of the eurozone have such a long time so we are facing an existential crisis regardless and tying our countries to this undemocratic uh, federal union kind of a, is not a good thing to do it will not play out well among the citizens of europe when they realize what has really been agreed yeah. and you know we have a long history in europe in in public revolts so <laughs> You know, it's been well few years, uh, few decades when the uh, you know the public revolt br brought down the Soviet Union. So I don't know. Maybe there is time for another union to fall in Europe. I don't know. Maybe, but at the same time, I see a big support for EU in uh, in Finland. I saw last year there was a um, there was a poll and support for the EU was at record high in Finland and also in Holland. I see the same thing. If I believe those official polls, then there's still a lot of support for the European Union. How do you? How do you match that with um, uh, with, 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 with the way we're being treated by, by Brussels? By telling the people the truth. Yeah. Telling what it what, telling what this all means. And that is not has been done. You know, it's it, especially concerned with the Corona Fund. It's, it's a bailout fund for Italy, Spain and Central Southern European banks. And that's if, if they would frame it like that and say, you, you need to do this to stay in the euro. I, I would see the uh, uh, on the EU. I would see support for the EU plummet in Finland quite rapidly. Yeah, so it's time to tell the truth. Well, hopefully this podcast uh, helps a little bit. Let, let's go through the steps then. Um, how would you go about leaving in the eurozone as Finland or or Holland for that matter? But let's just focus on Finland for now. What, what is uh, in your in your thread, you had a few steps, and, and the first step would be to decide the legal basis um, to, to exit, uh, because yeah. there's a few arguments you yeah. can use. Could you elaborate? Yeah, there are, there are basically three of those. There is the one. Uh, these, these are based on the on the combination of international law and the EU law. And and uh, let's say that this is not our our making. This is we heard a, a large group of constitutional experts and EU law experts too uh, to to come up with this. But there are three. There's First is the national emergency, uh, second is the other force majeure, and third one is the change or violation of the acts of the treaties and of principles of the Eurozone. And actually, we have had a, many countries have had national emergencies currently due to the coronavirus, so they apply to these exceptional situations. Other force majeure could be, well, well, for example, some other economic or political emergency, and there's a third one which basically states that we are not in the same union anymore that we joined into. And the Corona, corona Fund is definitely such a step. So it will, it will take us to a union where there would be a transfer of funds between nations. And that's banned in Article 125 of the, of the Treaty of the Function of the European Union. 
So that would be a clear argument to say that, okay, we don't go, we don't want the fund and thus we leave the euro. That would, that would most likely hold in, in, a, in based on the international law. So that would be the argument for any country to leave the eurozone now. Yeah, so Article 125, the no bailout clause, or also Article 123, I, I read in your article, um, which is also has also been breached. And not only with the Corona Fund, of course, but with this whole uh, QE program, and also the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Program. Um, also, these articles, uh, and articles uh, yeah, yes. have been breached many times. Yeah, yeah the, uh, one, Article 125. Three says that there cannot be any credit facilities or lines from the ECB to the member countries or institution of the, of the Eurozone. And with the, pan, the pandemic emergency purchase program, this is definitely what has happened now. You can, you can talk whether the QE was such or not. According to the European Court of Justice, it was not. Okay, fine. But according to the uh, German Constitutional Court, it was. But it's clear that the, that the PEPP, is definitely a, a breach of that article. I, I cannot see it any other way. So what, what, is, what is more worrying, the, the Corona Rescue Fund by the European Commission or the PEPP that has been raised to 1.35 trillion and, uh, and will also do, do, the, do the job? Well, I don't know, they are both in the, in the we, we are now entering, like I said, entering a state of unlawfulness. The ECB has already gone there and the commission is, is trying to get us all to follow. So both are equally bad. Okay, so there's, a, there's clearly a legal basis for, for, for leaving the Eurozone. Um, then the next step would be, I think, the, the secret planning of it, right? Because you don't yeah. want people to know that you're working on it to a certain extent, if, if possible. So how would that yeah. work? And is it also not against democracy? That because we've all, all also been, been sort of uh, pulled into, the, in, into this beast that the European Union is right now because of all sorts of shady uh, businesses. And now, in a way, by secretly planning an exit, are you not, are you not making the same mistake towards your own people? Yeah, that's that's a good argument. But the thing is that, yeah, the first, well, let's start first how it should go. So we should just, uh, the secret planning should, you know, include taking all the relevant aspects of, of the exit in the account, including the, uh, the payment systems, debts, uh, uh, the relations to other countries, domestic ch changes of domestic laws, how they apply to the um, international treaties, etc. This could be done without any kind of uh, pre, um, well, any, any kind of commitment to any exit. It would be just planning. But decision would need to be made in secret, and that's, the, that's truly the questionable part here on, on, based on democracy, but or the democratic principle. Well, in our, in our democracies, there, is, there are parliaments that need to make some tough decisions as we have selected them to be there. So this would fall, in, fall into that category. But the thing is that if you have had a um, referendum to join the euro, I'm not sure whether you need to have one to go. So, but based on, if, if you declare, for example, a national emergency or, you know, use such ar arguments, then you could probably bypass that in the, in the national, you know, parliaments or uh, in, in national laws. But you basically have a choice. Either you make the secret planning, parliament makes the decision and you leave, or you establish capital control, start a public discussion and have a referendum. You know, you, you don't have to be an economist to understand that the latter option is much more costly. If the, if the legal and political argument and economic arguments to leave are there, I don't see why shouldn't national governments be able to make that decision also by, by not asking the people or by themselves. So, but yeah. this is the questionable part here, for sure. But any, the, the thing is that we would not be breaching any laws. That, that should be made clear in the, in the domestic process when, when you prepare or leave the euro, that it should be a complete lawful process. So you, sh you should need to find the laws according to which you can exit, because otherwise it leads to problems. And, and we need to have, we need to keep the constitutional state intact in, in Europe. That's yeah. the most important thing. I know for a fact that uh, Holland back uh, in the days of the Greek crisis was actually um, coming up with a plan B. 
has Finland also been making plans in the past or do you, do you think they're currently planning something? Well, I hope they are. <laughs> I, I, I have no knowledge of such planning. Every government of the Euros, in the Eurozone should now make secret plans for, the, for exit the Euro, that's for sure. So I don't know, I just hope, I just hope that we are doing such planning. Yeah. How much influence do you have in, in Finland? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, I, it's really difficult to, uh, to, to judge because the, the thing in Finland is that we have a um, old, basically most of our older economists are currently afraid of something. They are giving really strange <laughs> uh, comments about you know how to, how to survive from the crisis, and my own age group would should kind of take the um, take the lead here they are not really stepping up to the plate so I'm kind of alone here uh, what comes to the economist of talking about this so I don't know it, it's really difficult it's really difficult to stay, say but people are definitely waking up now on the on the thing so even if you know it, and it will it will get really interesting towards the end of the summer how uh, the public debate in Finland is likely to go. And also there was uh, a, a uh, there was this con constitutional advice given to your government uh, recently. Yes. Um, um, how is that going to play out? It's, yeah, there's kind of constitutional crisis proving now because our constitutional committee, we don't have a court, but the committee stated basically that the, the proposal, the fund proposal is likely to breach European treaties and they advised against uh, government supporting EU taking uh, uh, taking loans or or uh, establishing debt and the EU giving grants. So if the if the Finnish government would have taken the, the advice of the Constitutional Committee in face value, Finland would have just just said no to the fund, but they didn't. So and the, the Constitutional Committee is the highest authority here uh, when it comes to the constitutional issues. And the government is now taking a different path. And so there is a, a massive discrepancy here. And it's interesting to see how it plays out because our experts, our, our constitutional legal experts are rather critical uh, on the fund. Basically all of them are. So this is, this is truly an interesting question. And I have to say that I have started to doubt the motives of our prime minister. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure anymore that she, she has the, uh, best interest of the Finns. In What's her agenda? Mind. Is it her own career within Europe? Or? Could be. That's 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 how it always plays in the Europe in in Eurozone or, the, or European Union. You know, you have you have you can you know there is this big influence of position commission or whatever. Or or then maybe she has been told that if if the Finland goes against it, the Eurozone will break and you know all the hell will break loose. Yeah, right will er emerge from the depths of the you know. This is this is how. This is how Europe usually works in the, that I know from the inner workings of the European Union that they scare politicians that may go yeah, against uh, general yeah. plans. Yeah, we've seen it, of course, in Greece in 2015, of course, with the referendum and, um, and, and also with, with the banks uh, um, uh, being shut down. And, and that led to a lot of fear, of course, um, even though the, the people there voted uh, against the new uh, Troika plan, but in the end, the prime minister decided to uh, to stick with the euro, uh, even yep. though Varoufakis, of course, had some, uh, was already thinking about uh, alternative yeah, payment, yeah. payment. But people are very scared, and especially the um, the leaders of a country, to to decide to go against the European Union or the euro because, yeah, if if hell breaks loose, of course, which could happen, we don't know. Then, of course, they're the ones to blame. So, but with that yeah. argument, it's almost impossible to to leave the eurozone because there's always a threat of of hell could break loose, and the European Union will do anything they can to make sure that the pain yeah. is being felt and we see it of course yeah. with britain as well so but we are we are now heading yeah we are now heading the banking crisis in in europe that's almost guaranteed so it, it doesn't if we if we leave if we leave the euro in the same hassle it doesn't really do much you know and there is no time for the european union to you know think about any retaliation in my opinion finland may be small enough to leave without too much of a of a hassle uh, and too could much be, pain. Could be, could be. But the, but the big gamble is here now that the EU has tied the fight of uh, the fate of the euro on the on the European Union. It's it's really it's a massive gamble.
Okay, so we had to the, the legal basis, the secret planning, but then of course we're getting into the, 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 the nitty gritty details. So I don't want to go too deep, but I do want to understand. So um, let's say Finland goes ahead and, and leaves the Eurozone, then how are payments going to work and what's going to happen with all these assets and liabilities that are now denominated in, in, in Euros, especially also the target two balance that, uh, that Finland has of, of uh, almost 70 yeah, that, uh, billion. Yeah, positive. <laughs> I, yeah, I, don't positive. Actually, I haven't checked what is it now. Okay, but there, there are like uh, two issues here. First is the, the, is the payment system. So you need the payment system for, for the uh, card payments to work and to clear the banks at the end of the day. And the thing that Finland has done, and they have gone full into the pan-European payment system. So we don't have any domestic payment system to work with anymore. Okay, so, but the thing is that um, all the recent information I have received is that the pan-European payment system will be kept operational no matter what. And in this case, it would mean that Finland would establish a capital controls and use the euro as the currency within Finland as the Finnish euro, which will be just exchange for, for the international euro at the border based on the, uh, on the international, on the exchange rate set in the, in the capital markets or the you know, participants in the global financial markets based on the demand and supply. And during that time, we would build uh, uh, domestic payment systems in here and just operate under capital controls. The other big thing is that how will the uh, pay, um, uh, deposits and, and, and loans and stuff like that be, be handled, uh, also debts, in, in, uh, when country leaves a, a, some currency or returns to her own currency. And there's the principle of, of Lex Moneta, or the law of money. It's an international, international reg recognized principle that sovereign nations can define the currency they use. And thus, they can uh, define also the currency they use to pay back their debts. Basically, it goes like this: if you have, if you have all the domestic banks, their assets, deposits, liabilities, loans, will all transfer to the new currency at the at the instant you leave the euro. If they are foreign banks, then it depends where the nexus of the contract is, and usually they are, you know, in the like in, in, in each country. So in, even in that case, if you have a lot of uh, deposits and loans in foreign banks, they are likely to be transferred to, to the new domestic currency or the new national currency in, uh, in an exit based on the, on the Lex Moneta. And same applies to your sovereign debt, unless there is the collective action clause, which now, uh, which has been included in many of the uh, sovereign debt in, in Eurozone since, was it 2015? And it basically requires that when there is a hassle uh, or, or question about the payments, for example, the currency you paid back, is that you have a negotiation between your government and the investors. And that could probably, re that could probably mean that it will remain in Euro in an exit, those, those debts. And then there's the corporate debt, which well, some of it will uh, transfer to the new new domestic currency, but probably not all. So there are there, there are the biggest risks risks in in uh, what comes to the uh, redenomination of of debt contracts. It uh, it's it lies in the in, in the debt of of corporations. And who's going to suffer most uh, from an exit in terms of of uh, what happen what's going to happen to their uh, to their claims and assets? Is it like the pension funds or, or any other? All, all those institutions basically that have a foreign denominated debt that cannot be transferred to the new domestic currency. And it's, it's, it's a national issue to, to find it out. And in Finland, it was just we found that few corporations would probably suffer. But it, it didn't look so bad. Actually, uh, when, it, when, when we looked at it in 2017, I have this. Um, the biggest, actually, our banks had the biggest uh, exposure to the foreign assets, it seems. But in, in any case, those would, these are the risks that kind of are related to the, the, the euro exit. 
Yeah, and and the the target two balance I checked in a, end of April for Finland it was uh, six uh, sixty seven point seven billion for Holland not even that much more eighty one point five billion. That that is a claim that the Finnish central bank has on the on the euro system. Yeah. Uh, what is going to happen then with that balance? Well, we, if we leave, we, we, it, it, it is just our claim. I think the target two would be kept alive, be, try to keep alive, be, if the, well, at least if, if some countries remain in the euro. But it is just our claim. But if every all countries leave Italy, leave, they probably would say that they won't pay it back. So that mm-hmm. could become a, um, a loss. And But, you know, that, that would be a, the target two imbalances are a matter of political discussion, political negotiations when we go to that. And it's just, it, they just have to be decided politically what will be done to those or happen to those. Yeah, because I understand as, as a non-Euro country, you can participate in target two payment system. Yes. Uh, so you, this would still allow your, your banks in Finland to, uh, to make payments abroad and to allow citizens to make payments. Yeah, yeah, um, that's how it works. Yeah. Okay, so you, you think it's doable. Are there recent research made by, by economists in your country what it, what it actually costs to stay in the Eurozone or the European Union? Well, to stay? No, well, no, I don't know. We haven't really talked about it. I, I, it's my estimate that saving the euro would mean three to, three to four trillion and the Finnish share would be something about 50 to 80 billion. So there's yeah. a massive, massive amount. Yeah, and, and uh, we have calculated that the exit of Finland would cost around 10 billion. Okay, so if you have a referendum, you could tell people, look, uh, this is the choice. You can, we can save the Eurozone or European Union and that will cost 50 billion. And we can exit, it will cost, we said 10. Yeah, naturally, naturally, we cannot have the referendum. So this, is, this has to be, need, need to be decided by politicians. Yeah, okay, but it could still be a campaign, uh, political parties in, fr- in favor and political parties against. That would be like the main theme for, for next elections. When will the next elections be? 2023, so there's quite a bit of time. Yeah, that's maybe, uh, we don't have that time then. No, by, we don't by, that, by that time, the fate has been already decided, perhaps. Yeah, the fate has been decided, and all the crisis. But of course, you can we, we can always always have a uh, you know government breaking up and, and new elections before. But we'll have to see. This is if you look the whole Europe, the the political instability has not been this high probably since the breakup of the Soviet Union in the late nineteen eighties. I would say. And would it make sense for Finland itself to uh, issue more uh, debt uh, as a country in order to um, have a more level playing field and to ease the pain of leaving? Because if you just add more euro liabilities um, and you do, you do like the Italians and, and um, give more money to the people, basically, uh, then would that not be a good thing? And um, maybe it's not uh, the most, uh, the nicest thing to do, but it would at least bring Finland to the same level of it- Italy, for example, or Spain when it comes to debt. Well, so you are you asking that we should go very much deep in the debt just to satisfy our what? I didn't I didn't understand the question. Sorry. Well, if you if you add more debt, um, uh, then once once there's, once there's a breakup, you have a smaller net claim on the system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's that's true. That's not really the finished way to do it. <laughs> no, we take- don't we don't we don't do we don't do this. These are for other countries to act like that. No, okay. we don't. Some, do that. Sometimes you have to resort to yeah. <laughs> protect no, yourself. I, I don't. I don't think explaining that to Finns would be extremely difficult, and they would they would probably not see it as a good thing. No. Okay. But even some economists have now proposed that if there's any if there's some problem with Finns economy in the future, we can get fund from the European Union, and <laughs> that's so that's such a naive idea. Who would pay us? If we are in trouble, whole Europe is sinking. So who would pay us? There will be no one left, yeah. honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's a moral hazard, of course. Uh, yeah, naturally. Yeah. Start to think yeah. like that. And go to ask Italians, would you, you know, support the Finnish economy? What do you think they would say? That's the right thing to do. Just uh, uh, accumulate <laughs> never do it. like we've done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but they would never do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very, they would just, you know, they, they have enough, they, you know, own problems. And it's just, it's the idea that we should transfer funds to governments through Europe. It's just ridiculous. We don't, we don't, our countries, it's just, we don't, there's no such culture here. 
And I don't see how if you would force that culture upon uh, upon the European citizens, I don't think that will lead to anything good. No, but in a way, the Italians are smarter than because they have low private debt and uh, a massive public debt. And in, in Holland, yep. for example, it's the other way around. So I wonder who's who's playing a smarter game here. Mm, a good, a very good question. Well, we'll see. And uh, but what can people themselves do then? For example, a, a Finn that's very uh, skeptical of the European Union and and fears uh, it will cost them a lot of money in the future. What can what can an ordinary household do in in Finland or or the Netherlands? The first, the demand to politicians that they will not accept these funds. And, and second, to be prepared for the banking crisis that is coming regardless. So, you know, you should, you should keep cash. If you have a lot of assets by gold, mostly, we don't, we, we unfortunately consider um, the, the crap cryptocurrency is a bit risky during the financial crisis because we don't know how they will behave. And, you know, be vigilant in all, all issues concerning debt and try to, try to pay us back as much debt as possible. And stocks? I wouldn't hold stocks at current valuation levels now. Okay, well, good advice. Are there any steps that, we, um, that we've missed in, uh, in, in exiting the euro? I don't think that, I, I think they were, they were the basic ones. There is a report, it's a, uh, published in the, the Economist's Voice, if you want to learn more, and also on the SSA on, so you can find it by Googling how to leave the euros in the case of Finland. There are okay. a lot of smaller details there, and, and they, uh, if you want, but I think we covered the, the, the biggest issues here, which are most concerning to people. Perfect, and I'll put some of these articles also in the show notes. Um, yep. well, it was great talking to you. Anything uh, else you want to add? No, I would just uh, like to say to all the, your listeners in, in the Netherlands that now is the time for, you know, a people's action and it's time for us to be brave and stop this madness that the European Union is, is turning into. Yeah, excellent. And the first step always, of course, is to inform yourself and hopefully this, um, this conversation helps people in that sense. Yeah, I, I, ho I hope so too, yes. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Thomas. Great talking to you. Uh, thank you.